it's Trisha, and I'm here to help you have some fun on Thursday. I was thinking, is it Thankful Thursday? Yes, because I posted just um, a couple days ago this quote where they said they had studied science and that if you say something that you're grateful for for 21 days, your happiness syndrome goes up. And I'm like, that is so good. So I am thankful. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for our home. And I'm thankful for this crazy rain that we have because I know it's going to bring us some flowers. So on that note, we are painting more flowers today. And this is um, a project. I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera down, okay, to let you see what we've been working on. This is a piece of wood. It's eight by eight. And this goes out to uh, the Barn Quilt Club group. Every month they get a project and they get a happy surprise present from me. And um, I'm taking it up a notch. We're gonna be doing some other things, but I thought I would um, have some private sessions for them and then cross over and show you some of the private session that I do with them. So the other day we were learning about uh, pencils and how to do shading and to make it look like it was a window so what's really cool is this is all one piece of wood, okay? Oh, and share with me where you're from and listen in. A couple of y'all have signed up for Barn Quilt Club. The time says it's not, uh, that the doors are closed, but I'm getting actually to open them now. So I've got to set my timer in the morning. All right, but I did this as a picture frame and I did the shading on that. So if you want to watch the other video on uh, Go Find Your Happy or In the Crafts, you'll be able to see a little bit more about it. Um, then I have a coloring mixed media book that's out on Amazon. It's this one, Stillness for the Soul. And I took some, some words out um, for decoupaging with brave wings I fly. So now we'll get down to the nitty gritty, okay? The nitty gritty is um, I kept my area very specific with the pencils the last time I jumped off with y'all. So now I'm going to think about, okay, what do I want to blend in? So we were working here on the leaf, and I thought I would just come down here for a little bit and work with y'all. And there's my phone. I thought we would play maybe with the bird. I love the bluebird. So let's go ahead and pull that bluebird up again. And I'd love to know where you're listening from. Let's see. Here we go. I'm going to Google Bluebird because I think that would be really, really pretty. So here we go. Now, isn't she cute, y'all? Oh, my goodness. I just want to hold her. She's so cute. All right. So what I've done is I've separated all my blues here. Anything that's in the blue family in your pencil stack, I want you to pull, okay? And then what I did is I noticed that she has oranges and some yellow and some white. So what I did is I decided to go ahead and pull all my oranges together, okay? So if you haven't seen the last video, definitely watch that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit this little bluebird. I think of Cinderella when I think of bluebird. I think the bluebird's around singing with Cinderella. I think so. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. That was a cool, that was a cool movie. All right. So I am going to go very, very lightly. When you're using pencils, you don't want to go hard. Over the years, we have been taught to press hard to get a really good color. We don't want to do that. Um, what we want to do is go lightly and build up over time. So here I have these little insets because it's etched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start here above her eye. And I'm just going to go very lightly. And this is with light cerulean blue. I'm going to go very, very lightly. I'm a fan of Prismacolors, even though they're a little bit more expensive. Um, they just make really nice blending. 
So I'm going to go ahead and bring that blue down very lightly. And the benefit of using pencils is it can give you a different effect uh, in comparison to, let's say, watercolor or acrylic. I mean, you've seen painters that have done acrylic and you go, oh my goodness, that looks like a realistic painting, right? Um, people who use pencils, they can get vibrant colors and they can really make something look very, very realistic. If you've seen um, images, I, in fact, that's on my list. When Riley passed away, I, Kurt wants me to um, sketch a picture of Riley. So if I need to do that, might be a project I do for Father's Day or something. So our puppy, he li lived to 13 and a half. Oh, I'm hearing thunder. I'm down here in the cottage. So let's hope the internet hangs. Let's hope. All right, so I'm just doing a little bit of blue, but what I'm gonna do is now take another blue. So this one is true blue. So I'm just gonna do a feather here again. And if you see what I'm doing here, I'm not going like covering up all of the lines. I'm gonna take this down just a little bit more. There we go. There we go, now you can see the real nitty gritty. So you can see that I'm leaving pieces of the wood exposed. So I'm doing that actually on purpose because I wanna start getting shades of blue and not one color so intense, right? Because birds have feathers and there's flecks of color and all of that back on my phone so I can see my little picture and I'm going to take a this is Copenhagen blue and that's a little darker what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this in the corner where her beak is because I'm looking at this photo here and it kind of gives me an idea and you can see there's like that uh, like almost like a black here but really it's probably we wouldn't necessarily use black completely. So what I'm going to do is just take a darker blue into this crevice. It's just, just to start giving dimension. Now, it's not going to be a realistic necessarily type of bird because this is a whimsical kind of look for um, mixed media. Um, it's fun and it doesn't have the geometric patterns of a traditional barn quilt, but uh, those of y'all who are in the group, you said, oh, I love this. I love the bird. So I decided to give you guys the bird and change it up. Give you guys a surprise for the spring. So I'm going to bring a little bit of the dark blue right here. I'm just going to continue to work that. And she might feel a little weird to me right now because I'm not touching her eye. What I'm doing is I'm just going to focus on the feelings of feathering, okay? So I'm going to go back to, I'm just going to play with blues. This is an ultramarine. And again, I'm just going to go over very lightly. So I'm kind of doing, I don't know what the word would be. I'm calling it schmattering. <laughs> sprinkling. Um, I'm just lightly sprinkling this color in. When we did the leaves, I had you go in little, little circles because that's called burnishing and that, that can get uh, a very consistent coverage. Right now, I want to do my consistent coverage over a period of time. Okay. I'm going to turn on this so that way if you ever want to go back and look at it, you can. Let me type this in. There you go. Okay, so we're going to just continue to bring her to life. 
bring her to life. Okay. So ultramarine. I'm going to take that a little darker right there. And I'm trying to decide what I want to do. with these lines in between. What's calling to me is actually take these lighter and I'm coloring her different for the very, very first time. So if you're like, oh, I don't like that, um, that's where I can always paint over it. I think I'm gonna do some dark blue here. Now this is the burnishing where I'm saying I'm not putting a lot of pressure but I'm going in very, very small strokes here, okay? Just like little circles. Very well could be that she comes to life where I do pencil and then over top of it, I do acrylic with a brush and bring out more real leaves and do a layering. But we'll just see how she evolves. I have a feeling like when Bob Ross taught, he did that. He, you know, we say about his happy trees and so forth, but he had an idea. But then as the project, the painting continued, it took on a life of its own, really. I think that's what's kind of neat. So down here, I'm going to leave that knot blue so I'm going to actually get my white Prismacolor pencil and I'm just going to come in right here just so that way I have it kind of labeled for me that I want a little bit of white on her belly okay and if anybody of y'all are local to Hickory North Carolina and there is a tornado warning or anything like that will you please Hit me up in the chat, please. <laughs> so that way I make sure I get coverage because I'm down in the woods surrounded by trees. So I want to be want to be safe. Okay. So there's the white there. Now, to give me a feeling of how she's coming to life, I'm going to go ahead and start incorporating the oranges and the yellows around her body because I really feel like if I do that, then I'm not going to go too blue, and she's going to start coming to life for me, okay? So let's go ahead and take a little bit of this here. And I hope you all had a good day. I was telling my mom, I'm like, I have to do, I mean, I do art every day, but I'm being more intentional about doing my videos every day because being with y'all, it brings me joy. So I need to do more of that. I mean, I'm a coach in coaching you to help you unlock your joy and your voice and feeling at peace. And it is amazing how that can start helping you in your life you know I'm gonna cover and this is the thing is you I'm taking this orange over the blue this is a vermilion red so even though it sounds like it might be red Take that in, and now I'm going to introduce some yellow. If you don't mind, I'm going to turn on another studio light since it got really dark here for the storm. Let's go ahead and turn a big studio light on so you can see those vibrant colors that I'm doing. There we go. Much better, isn't it? Oh my goodness sakes. I thought I was sitting there in the dark. All right. So this is where you're, you're seeing, you see the little flex. So it's like a little feathering. 
In fact, I'm going to do this technique. I'm going to just do like little boom, 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 hitting it. Hitting it on purpose, like just to give it lines, so like it's flex of a feather. Oh yeah, I like that. So I'm glad I went really light on this because I actually want to introduce some more white into this area. I have this actual white uniball pen that I love working with. So I want to show you how cool it is. So we're mixing. And this is what mixed media is all about. Mixing more than two elements together to create a work of art. It could be paper over top of, the, of it. It could be introducing some ink over a pencil. It could be using a gel pen with acrylic paint. Oh, I am loving that. This is why I'm in love with the white uniball pen. When I render the video thing, I'll, I'll tell you the exact one because there's different ones that you can choose from. This one is my absolute favorite. Oh yeah, I'm loving her. But now there's a pencil that is called colorless and it doesn't it intentionally has no color, but it is the same makeup as a normal Prismacolor pencil. And what that does is it allows it to have good blending ability. So I'm just blending. I'm going to go ahead and run, run this over all the blues because I use three different light shades of blues. I want to show you this so you can see the difference. So up here, you know, I just put a recipe of, of light blues. But look at this one. Do you see the difference? So the difference is this gives it a polished, finished, silky look versus uh, the coloring lines. But if you look over here, I actually did coloring lines. And the reason why I did the coloring lines is because I wanted it to feel like a picture frame, like old wood, okay? So I'm just blending this in here. And I'm coming back over here. I'm still gonna figure out what I wanna do with these lines here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out. I'm going to smooth this out with the colorless pencil. If you do not have a colorless pencil, regardless of what pencils you use, I highly recommend a colorless pencil because it just really works well in getting into those grooves and pushing down into either a toothed paper or a toothed piece of wood. I'm just going to go in little circles right here. Just kind of, I'm just like kind of massaging the muscle. <laughs> Why did I say that? Because I've been going to the doctor every single day since my MRI for physical therapy, chiropractor. Physical therapy, chiropractor. Because we, my friends, are going to get me stronger. So my shoulder is healthy and good. And when things continue to open up, we can do a live retreat and you can come. Because I do art retreats with spiritual work. Nothing to scare you spiritually. Finding your happy, finding your joy. Just being together. I'm also going to go up here and smooth this one out. Because I just kind of want to see around her beat how she's going to feel. 
So my intuition tells me that with the bird, I either want to work with my ink pencils or my um, watercolor pencils. Why? Because I want to blend those um, feathers together. So I'm going to turn this up here. It looks like it's sideways, but it's not. This is my pencils for Prismacolor. I'm going to go ahead and make that latch. And the second layer here is ink and watercolor. And I want to show you what happens with ink and watercolor when you mix it with water. Okay. So I'm going to follow my own teaching rules. So remember I said when you're working with a color to pull out all the colors in that family. So right now we're working with blues and orange. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out anything that may be in the orange family. These are the watercolor. There's a yellow there. There's a honey. There's a lemon yellow. There's a tan, which is nice when it blends in between the two. And then these are called deer work. Deer, can I not talk tonight? Deer went ink tents. And these are actually pencils that are ink. And the ink gets activated when you use water with them. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull out my oranges for this. Because I'm not exactly sure how it's all going to come to life yet. Boy, isn't that like life? Sometimes we don't know exactly how things are going to turn out. But we just got to start. We got to start the steps. It's kind of like painting. You don't know what your, your canvas of life is going to look like until you pick up the paintbrush. Oh, man, I need to write that down as a quote, don't I? You don't know what your portrait of life is going to look like or it won't come to life unless you pick up the paintbrush. Okay, so there's my yellows. Let's have a little bit of fun with these yellows. I've got a little container here of some water. So I can do it in either two different ways. Number one is I can dip the pencil in, very lightly into the water, just enough to get it a little wet. And I can do my little streaks here. Wow, and that sunflower yellow is so pretty. Bring that down. Now I want to show you the, the ink level of when you use an ink level. All right, so this one is a tangerine. This is the ink one. I'm going to go ahead and dip this in water, and you can, you'll be able to see immediately the difference. See how much more vibrant that is? So I'm actually going to go over top of that with of what I did on the watercolor. It's okay to mix and match. And I'm letting this come around to the blue. I don't have this up for sale on Go Find Your Happy. It won't hit until next month because my barn quilt members um, get certain patterns first. So just message me if you like it or if you want to be a part of our club. Have a good time. All right. So see, I'm loving that. So let's just pull up the camera here and let's look at. We need to name the bluebird. Who can give me a name for little Miss Bluebird? Oh, Bluebell. We can name her Bluebell. Okay, so there we go. We see how that is coming in. But this is her wing. So I actually want to, I'm going to use either acrylic or we're going to try the Deer Work ink um, pencil 
because it activates so vibrant. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to pull out my blues. This is Lagoon, Dark Aquamarine, Iris Blue. Ooh, Iris Blue. I like the name of Iris Blue. Y'all want to see what Iris Blue looks like? All right, so I'm dipping it in water just a little bit. Let's see what Miss Iris Blue looks like. Oh, my goodness sakes. That is definitely bluebird material right there. I'm going to go really light so I can have those streaks. See that? If I'm talking too loud for y'all, let me know. Don't mean to. I get excited. Okay, so I'm dipping the pencil right in the water. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm bringing, because the tip is wet, I'm able to bring and do little, little strokes. Little strokes of the pencil. What's nice about this is when you're traveling, okay? Because for those of y'all who camp or you travel by car and you're wanting to do something while you're traveling, this carrying your pencils and this is awesome. And then if you want, you could have a bottle of water like you're drinking a bottle of water but you could have your bottle of water and just dip it but then you wouldn't have to rinse your brush and do all of that um also if you were to fly um sometimes it's hard to carry all your paints with you so you could carry one pack of pencils and have it pulled all together i'm going to go ahead and do um another round of ink here and i'm going to go over top of my blue Now, if I wanted to have that stained glass look, I could go and have all of these little areas white. And it would be, and literally we could duplicate that it would be a stained glass window. And I'm wondering. Okay, who is ever watching? Would you like to see these, these in white or would you like me to see them in color? You want me to take color to them? I'm really wondering. Y'all are quiet with me tonight. Kurt was like, I'm going to watch TV. And I was like, well, I'm going to go down to the cottage. <laughs> I thought it was a good time at in the evening to be able to connect and show you some stuff. Yes, color, thank you. All right, so, so what I'm doing is I'm just, whether it's a watercolor or the ink pencil, I'm just dabbing like it almost like is a brush, working as a brush. I actually like this concept of doing little dots. So on gofindyourhappy.com, the only reason I'm bringing it up is I have a mandala dot tool. So if you wanted to paint her in acrylic, like we did the background in this, you could use actually the mandala dot tool by dipping it in the blues. I'm loving this. This is, it literally is starting to look like feathers that you can touch. I actually am getting the chills because that is so cool, such a cool effect. So this is dark up in the rain. Let's just kind of, oh my goodness, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. And instead of putting water on the wood and then working it, I'm dipping it in like a brush so I can be very concentrated on where I want those little dots to go. Oh my goodness. Oh, yes, lover. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same. I'm 
with my some yellow, some white here. And this is the watercolor white, so you, it's not going to be as vibrant. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that dotting effect. Go back here with this orange. Get her a little bit more wet here. Okay, and that's making green. I don't like that. The bluebird does not have green. She has orange and blues. So I am not going to wet this area with with the meld in you know blending the orange and yellows into the blue. I'm going to go back to my Prismacolors or markers, okay? Because yellow and blue make green and we don't want a green bird. <laughs> I was having a sip of my crystal light there. I was thirsty. I got to drink more water. Speaking of that, I got the biggest water bottle, y'all. I'll have to show you tomorrow. Um, it's a gallon one, and it has, like, all these little happy sayings on it because I need to drink more water. Um, my face has really shown weight gain because I was on four rounds of steroids in two months, and so I've just got to... I've got to lose that weight and I got to drink more water and be more healthy. And so I say that because they say by the time you're thirsty that you're already dehydrated. And that is not good. All right. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and work the back of her here. And I'm going to go back to a different, I'm going to go back to the Prisma color back here. I'm sorry I'm shaking the camera on you. Probably because I... I got to move the little gray thing next time there. All right, so I'm going in little circles because I'm wanting this blue to become more dominant. And then I'm going to bring this blue. This is called Copenhagen blue. I'm going to bring this blue and I'm going to go in little circles going over the ink pencil that I have used. So that way it feels like it has covering. And then where there's flecks of the, um, the wood here, I'm actually going to uh, put in a little bit of white. Let's see. Where's my white Prismacolor? White Prismacolor is definitely better on this. So, so I'm going to bring like the... Sh it's almost like white is now being used as a shading technique to give it a feathery feel. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm going to pull this up. I think the whole bird should like follow this formula right, right here. This is a brand new technique. And, you know, that's the thing is the more that we, we do things together as a tribe, as a, you know, our little art family, we'll try new things. But I want to pull this up for you. Look at that. Do you see that? Isn't that amazing? Oh, it's blowing my mind. Blowing my mind. I love it. Okay. I get so silly at times, but that's what makes me happy. Okay, so I'm going to bring, I really want to do that dot technique all 
down her belly. I'm loving it. I've done actually probably three to four videos on this piece because I wanted to show you what you could do. So we'll be doing more tomorrow because we're going to actually color the letters in or the words in and do the farmhouse beads. So I'm really excited. So there's the dots. I'm kind of being like a kid, you know? I'm just bringing those dots in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over this with white. This is a white watercolor, so it's a little different. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of tan so it's not so orangey. I'm going to go a little bit harder on my pressure just to get a nice good covering going. And then I'm going to do this dot technique down this, uh, this, uh, this line here. And I'm actually not going to even be staying in the lines. I'm just using it as a guide to kind of swoop the feather around. So I'm not going to do the other side so it looks like a circle or like a coloring book image. I'm actually just using it as a guide. I'm going to come into this area down here. And you may say, you're going outside the lines again, Trisha. Yep, I am. There we go. There's the dotting. <gasps> My goodness sakes, I'm falling in love. I'm falling in love with you. Little Miss Blue, Blue, Blue Bird. Really, we need to name the Blue Bird because she's going in my sunroom. Whoops. Bright. I don't know. A little bright, bright blue. We need a name when we get time. <laughs> I gotta call her something because she's so cute. So just as art, it always looks worse before it looks better. Kind of looks like, girl, you're messing it up. And now I'm going to go in here with these flecks of white just to feel like it's bringing its little texture. Do you like me doing um, sessions in the evening or does it matter? Or do, or do you like me just where you can watch it anytime as long as I give you notice that I've loaded a video up? I'd love to know that. So um, I've got the bursitis and tendonitis in my shoulder, but as long as I take a nap a little bit before, I can do evenings if that works better for y'all. And I know I watch videos in the evening because Kurt might be watching something on, I don't know, he watches those survivor type shows like in the desert or I don't know survivor but not survivor do you know what I'm saying and so sometimes I'm like oh, that's not my, that's not my show <laughs> so I don't mind coming down here especially as it gets more and more summer so I feel that that's blue. so I am going to do something a little crazy I'm going to introduce this Naples yellow just for kicks. I want to see if we can go over top of it and just see if it feels featherly to me. Am I using the right word saying featherly? I'm going to get my little cup here. 
And I'm not going to put a lot of paint on there, okay? I am just going to have a little bit of Naples yellow. It's like a very soft yellow. You'll see it here. And if I were my little detail brush, where would I be? Here I am. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get just a, like small brush. When you get barn quilts for me, I give you flat brushes. But if you're um, wanting to do more with me, my recommendation is just to get yourself a set of detail brushes. They don't have to be expensive. You can get the pack. Walmart, you know, Hobby Lobby, wherever. So let's just see how she feels painted. So for those of y'all who are in the club and you got your, you know, this bird this week, definitely watch these videos, okay, because I actually am looking that it's kind of cool to cover up the lines. Now, if you have someone younger or someone who's, like my mom did the bird, she loved the lines. She's 84, right? So she loved the lines that gave her an opportunity, but you can do whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and get some white because I want to bring some white and some blue flex into that. So maybe and I'm going to get a different blue here and let's just play. Just play, just to play, play a little bit. And I promise the next video we will not be shaken. I don't want to lift everything up on you. Actually, let me just go ahead. I can hold on just a minute. I change the camera. Hi. Okay. I'm going to change my little gray holder. There we go. Much better. So now we will not shake because I got rid of that. Definitely much better. Okay. My little pencils. Let me purchase a bit. All right. No more shaking. There we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put a little bit of white down on my plate and a little bit of blue. So I'm going to go back over here with the white. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the ink pencil. I'm going to go ahead and just do some dabs here. Okay, and this is an island blue, so I'm not a fan of totally that blue. So I'm going to use it lightly over her. Man, you know what? It just rolled up on my phone that it's going to be 81 degrees tomorrow. Wow. I bet my hubby's going to be talking about opening up the pool, y'all. Okay. There's that blue there. I'm going to get another blue. I'm going to work in a royal blue here, and I'm going to work in a navy blue. So just like pulling out, you know, your pencils and organizing them together, um, I, I'm doing this raw and, un, you know, unplugged <laughs> for you instead of having it, like, 
you know, major as a teacher, here's what I suggest. We're bringing her to life, y'all. We're bringing her to life. Oh, yeah, this is the Navy. Over top of that island blue. And now I'm falling in love with her again. Falling in love with you. And I'm just dabbing here. And who knows, y'all, you know me, I may be putting paper. Or who knows if I'll put a charm around her. Who knows if she'll carry something in her mouth like a stork does. I don't know. All I know is this storm is getting bad and I'm stuck. So Lord help me. Linda, is that you by any chance? Millie Bird. Oh, I like Millie. Hi, Millie. Because Linda, if that's you, because you're down the road, please tell me if there's a any tornado or anything. I'll be okay. You're hopping off. I'll be careful. I promise. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of the light blue on my brush, a little bit of the navy blue on my brush, a little bit of the royal blue on my brush. And look, I'm just dabbing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for telling me no tornadoes in the area because I was like, uh oh, because I right before I came down here, I read about how the storms came through the south. And let me make sure I'm okay. See, I don't want to mess with that head. That head looks so cool with that ink. So now I'm just bringing in another level of texture. In fact, I've got what's called um, modeling paste, right? And modeling paste is pretty cool because it's like a gesso, it's, but it's thick and you can color it if you want. And so if I wanted to, you can see it's like really thick. So I could like do a little spoonful over here on my little plate and I could mix it with the yellow. I mean, with the, what, the modeling paste, if I wanted the bird to feel a little thicker off the board, almost like an oil painting. So I've got modeling paste that's acting as a white, but at the same time, it's, oh my goodness, I love this. See, so I'm using the modeling paste, I'm coloring it, and then I'm doing just like the bird would have on her feathers, texture. Bring that down. So ladies, those of y'all who are in the club, I'll make sure that I have the paint uh, supply or the exact paints I used here for this, if you want to copy what I'm doing. I am working on animals being incorporated into geometric barn quilts. So that's coming soon. So I would love if you catch this on the replay, tell me what animal would you love to see in a barn quilt? I'll do maybe a little bit more here. Oh my goodness, I gotta walk up to the house in this mess. Woo. I think I might pray for it to end as soon as possible so that way I can.
and not be exposed too much to bad. So I'm going to clean this brush here. I'm going to pick up one of my other little brushes. I'm actually going to use this white modeling paste just right here on it. That way it doesn't get blended into the blue. It just slides over it and it's a little thicker. Go ahead and bring this blue up here just a little bit. So that way we can see the, the line over her body. So it's coming down just a little bit. Think about that Bible scripture about the sparrow that the Lord has his eye on the sparrow. I know the bluebird's not the sparrow tonight, but this reminds me that the Lord has his eyes on us all the time to take care of us. Wow, she's pretty. I'm going to clean this brush a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and bring in some of this Naples yellow again. And don't feel pressured that you have to do an acrylic paint with a brush on this. You can, because up here you're going to see me probably do gel pens, okay? So what's happening here is we're just using different things that's all All right, so since that is wet, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and sign off for tonight, but I hope you were able to get some ideas of how to start incorporating. This is pencils up on the top. This is pencil on the top, and I decided after using pencils to just start bringing in acrylic paint, but she is really, really cute. She's cute as all get out. So... I will give you another session probably tomorrow and we'll go from there. Okay. Have a blessed night and don't forget to uh, visit barnquiltclub.com to see what we're all about. And if I can help in any way, let me know. All right. Big hugs. See ya. Bye.